Harry T. Moore, a teacher and activist that fought for the justice of African Americans, started the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, or NAACP, in Brevard County, Florida, which worked to fix the unjust ways that many African Americans were forced to live. The program he led was a triumph in the African American community because it launched a remarkable amount of justice for colored people and the system was dedicated to giving them the basic rights they deserved. Unfortunately, Harry T. Moore suffered a tragic death inflicted by the Ku Klux Klan due to his involvement with the civil rights movement throughout his life. Harry T. Moore's words, actions, and contributions led to the devastating martyrdom that ended his life ultimately striking confidence and dignity in civil rights activists. These contributions included Moore's help in registering thousands of African-American voters, assisting in multiple lawsuits that were on aspects of separate but equal, as well as a multitude of other issues. Harry Tyson Moore was born on November 18, 1905 in Suwannee County, Florida, and was an only child to Johnny and Rosa Moore. Moore's father died of health complications when Moore was just nine years old. His mother struggled to raise him alone, so she eventually sent him to live with his aunt at the age of 10. Just a year later, he was moved to Jacksonville to live with another aunt of his, Jesse Tyson. This was the most developmental stage in Moore's life. He was raised in a proud African-American community by three strong, educated aunts who prided themselves in their intellectual achievements and self-sufficiency. They loved Moore unconditionally as if he was their son. It was through them that Moore garnered his curiosity and love of learning. In 1919, after three years of living in Jacksonville, he moved back home to Suwannee County, Florida, where he enrolled in the high school program of Florida Memorial College and excelled in his studies. He obtained a teaching degree, then moved on to pursue his career as an educator. Moore then began working as a teacher in the segregated public school system of Brevard County. He started at a school in Cocoa, Florida, working as a fourth grade teacher in their only colored school. It was there that he met his future wife, a fellow educator, Harriet Vida Sims. They married on Christmas Day and decided to move to her hometown of Mims, later having two daughters. During this time, Harry also became principal of the Titusville Colored School, which was the only school available for colored children grades 4 through 9th. While working there, he was able to realize that separate but equal wasn't the reality and began to really become interested in the fight for civil rights. After starting a family and building his career as an educator, he started the Brevard County NAACP in 1934 as a result of the severe injustices he witnessed. Then, in 1937, along with NAACP attorney Thurgood Marshall and the all-black Florida State Teachers Association, Moore filed the first lawsuit in the Deep South to equalize pay between black and white teachers. This case was eventually lost in state court, but it paved the way for several other lawsuits to eventually be filed, leading to equal salaries. He also fought against different racial injustices such as segregated schools and deprivation of voting rights. But in 1943, he moved to the more dangerous issue of lynchings and police brutality. Less than a year later, Moore investigated the lynching of Willie James Howard and took affidavits from Howard's parents, which stated that he was forcibly taken from their home and made to leap to his death at only age 15. Moore pushed for the investigation to be turned into a federal case. Unfortunately, that was outside of the NAACP's jurisdiction and they cut funding. The case came to an end, but Moore continued to work to expose anyone who condoned or played a part in lynchings. In 1944, after Thurgood Marshall's victory in the Smith v. Allwright case, where the Supreme Court deemed the white Democratic Party primary as unconstitutional, Moore put together the Progressive Voters League, working to gain voting rights for African Americans. Triumphantly, Moore helped over 116,000 African American voters register in the Florida Democratic Party, representing 31% of all black voters in Florida, and was 51% higher than any other southern state. In July of 1949, Moore became involved in a case that reached national level, the Groveland Rape Case. In this case, four black men were accused of raping a white woman outside of Groveland, Florida. Due to this, a white mob stormed through Groveland's black neighborhood with such force that the National Guard had to be called in to settle the situation. One of the four men, Ernest Thomas, escaped custody, confronted, and was killed by a mob who shot him 400 times and the rest moved on to be tried and convicted. Once he learned about it, Moore became deeply involved in the case. 
Moore worked to uncover evidence in favor of the black men, showing how they were brutally beaten. The men, Walter Irvin, Sammy Shepard, and Charles Greenlee were convicted in 1949. Two of them, Irvin and Shepard, were sentenced to death. But in 1951, the convictions were overturned by the Supreme Court, only to have Lake County immediately prepare to reconvict them. Then, on November 6th of 1951, Sheriff McCaw shot both of the men while driving them somewhere, killing Shepard and critically wounding Irvin. The officer claimed the men attacked him, but Irvin recalled the officer forcefully pulling them out of the vehicle and shooting them for no reason. The shooting was turned into a national scandal, and Harry T. Moore began working to suspend and indict Sheriff McCall for murder. This caused Moore to be the target for a deadly attack. In 1951, on Christmas Day, a bomb that was planted underneath Moore's bed went off at 10.20 a.m., sending Moore flying into the ceiling. When ambulances refused to take him to the hospital, he was loaded into a much slower vehicle where he tragically died of his injuries. The bomb was believed to have been planted by the Ku Klux Klan because of the association Moore had with the NAACP. The explosion also killed his wife, Harriet, but both of his daughters, Evangeline and Rosalie, survived. After Moore's murder, George Brightman wrote The Jim Crow Murder of Mr. and Mrs. Harry T. Moore, which told of his contributions and the things he endured in order to fight for the justice of all Americans alike. He describes Moore as a very noble man that should be respected and looked up to. Moore's words of wisdom were exemplified on the day of his martyr and were honored in the years that followed. Moore said, freedom never descends upon a people. It is always bought with a price. His famous quote came to life on Christmas Day. The effects of his death stirred emotion and terror as people were realizing that racial disagreements were escalating to violence and inspired more movements that struck down racial discrimination. In 1952, Moore received the Spingarn Medal from the NAACP in honor of his contributions. In efforts to honor the Moore family, the Cocoa, Florida Post Office dedicated their building to them as well. Famous poet Langston Hughes also dedicated something in Harry's honor. The poem reads, When will men forsake of peace and for democracy where no bombs a man can make keep men and women from being free. In this he says, our Harry Moore, as from the grave he cries, no bomb can kill the dreams I hold, for freedom never dies. This poem refers to the dreams and hopes that Harry holds, even though he lost his life for them. Hughes ultimately touches the hearts of many people, making them realize the cruelty that so many people have simply because they can't accept others fighting to attain the rights that they deserve. After the Moore assassination, the case was opened and closed repeatedly, until finally, in 2004, the case was reopened, this time by Charlie Crist, who specifically highlighted any physical evidence or memories of what happened. Crist claimed that the four men who murdered Moore and his wife were already dead and were named the following, Earl Brooklyn, Tillman Blevins, Joseph Cox, and Ed Spivey. In reaction to the surprising news of a 20-year-long investigation, Evangeline Moore spoke for everyone when she said, God is taking care of them and they are resting in hell. Several memorials have been dedicated to the couple, which provide information on the activists and the important work they did for the black community. Although many people can name a handful of activists that fought for the rights of colored people, the acts and sacrifices of both Harry T. Moore and his wife, Harriet V. Moore, often go unnoticed. And the NAACP, and working to put an end to lynchings, Harry T. Moore not only contributed to an amazing movement that would eventually put an end to racial inequalities, but would strike passion and love in the black community. The efforts that went into these fights can only be briefly explained, but in its entirety, is full of triumphs and tragedies that are well worth it in the end. It seems I hear Harry Moore from the earth, his voice still cries. No bomb can kill the